in the hands of two very talented pilots. Gabriel Nassif, another Hall of Famer here from France, up against Austin Bursavich, who is, of course, from the United States. And these two, uh, these two players here read playing lists that, uh, on the face of it, look very, very similar. Yeah, I, I think so. This is this is a tough one to pick a winner. And may you know, have lost our, our Reed here, the... unfortunately. We'll see if we can get Reed back. In the meantime, kicking things off here with the openers of these two players. Obviously, Lucky Clover, the exact card that you want to see in pick your uh, in your starting hand here, along with that Beanstalk Giant. Although no green mana for the Fertile Footsteps. On the other side of things, let's have a look at what Nasif might be working with. And again. Well, I mean, here the Fable Passage is a green source, but is not going to be able to power out that in turn one Edgewall Innkeeper. And no Lucky Clovers to speak of. So let's get things here underway here in the lower final. Austin Bursavich against Gabriel Nassif. And we'll see how things pan out as this game opens up. There is a setup phase typically with this Four Colour Adventures deck. And uh, often, oh, there's a tidy rip from Gabe off the top there, that Lucky Clover. Very, very fortunate indeed. There's a setup phase in which uh, the Omnath deck is a little vulnerable. Uh, we've seen some more aggressively slanted decks take advantage of that throughout the weekend here. But I'll turn to Lucky Clover. A difficult start to contend with, although here it's going to be a little, a little more even as both players are going to be able to power out that turn to Lucky Clover. And by the look of things here, no. Bursavich missing out on the opportunity to cast a uh, turn three Beanstalk Giant with the Lucky Clover here. So Gabe with his snoot just a hair in front, thanks to the opportunity for him to do that. It's generally a very powerful way to begin your uh, campaign here. Although both players bereft of Omnath at this point. Turn two Lucky Clover. So both players living their best life here. Very fortunate indeed to... Oh, there's that forest off the top for Bursevich, speaking of fortune. So now Beanstalk Giant can go and snag two lands here. And uh, as we're saying here, we may have Reed back with us. Uh, Lucky Clover hey, on Riley, turn two. Sorry, the perfect start there, for both players. But uh, I'm back. Thanks for holding down the fort. And yeah, we are into... Uh... We're right into it here. Both players seemingly with a good draw. Lucky Clover on both sides. We sort of talked about the the categories of games. You know, the the one where this deck operates with no Lucky Clover. The one where one player has Lucky Clover, the other does not. And then this is this is door number three, where both players are going to be operating at full proficiency. So um, there you see Austin with a with a tempo play, actually giving up quite a lot there because you notice. He bounced Nassif's Lucky Clover, which means there is no target for the, the second copy or the original copy of Brazen Borrower. That card just went straight to the graveyard. So there you see Austin really, really prioritizing getting ahead on the board and making sure that Nassif can't make that play of Beanstalk Giant on turn three. And that is really about a short-term gain, uh, giving up the potential to draw a card with the Brazen Borrower in later turns With once Edgewall Endkeeper becomes down. So you make a good point, Reid. It really um, uh, highlights what Austin considers to be important in this matchup. And, and maybe Tempo, maybe these setup turns that I was alluding to before really are his priority. We, we've actually seen him make this play a couple of times throughout the weekend, the early um, uh, Petty Theft in order to bounce Lucky Clovers. So... Uh, I mean, he's done all right with it so far. See how it serves him in this match here. Yeah, Austin has a really good setup here. And what he's missing is a payoff card. You know, if he had escaped to the wilds, mm -hmm. I think we'd be almost ready to call this one in his favor. He doesn't have that. He has a lot of mana. And right now we're watching him navigate some interesting decisions with regard to a double-faced land spell, a triome, whether to play one of these lands or or which, which one potentially both he might need to keep in his hand for uh, future gas in the tank. So an untapped Shatter Skull there for three life enables this Fertile Footsteps, which goes and gets two lands. Ooh, how about an Omnath off the top here for Gabe? That's a great draw. Yeah, it unlocks some really interesting options. Um, you know, Nasif is a turn behind schedule, thanks to Austin's play of Brazen Borrower. He really does want to get that Beanstalk Giant off, off the gates and copied with Lucky Clover. Omnath, you know, do you want to play that ahead of schedule and hope it survives? Or do you want to play it on a later turn where maybe you can get your land drop right away? These are the decisions that Gabriel Nasif is wrestling with. 
Omnath, of course, has turned the standard uh, form on its head with the rotation uh, that we've just had. Zendikar Rising certainly brings a number of very powerful cards, but forefront amongst them, Omnath, which has really defined the standard format and, and defined this tournament as well. And here, offering no end to of power to Gabe here if he chooses to play the Mythic out. And uh, no, he's going to take a different tack here. And instead, Fertile Footsteps to get two lands. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is um, you know, fits in the category of play that we've seen a lot of these Omnath players uh, use throughout the course of the weekend. And this is not deploying the creatures until you can get maximum value from them. So it comes up a lot with Edgewall Innkeeper, of course. Yeah. You want to play that on a turn where your next play is an adventure creature to draw a card. But Omnath too, you know, Nasif could play Omnath there and say go. That's a high upside play if nothing bad happens. But, you know, Nasif's not one to go for the high upside play. He, he wants to play it safe and, uh, you know, minimize his opponent's maximum value, so to speak, play for the worst case scenario. And Reed, you just talked about how this deck is all about making sure you maximize the advantage you get from those cards. And that's exactly what we saw there. That edge will end keep it kept on ice until... There were eight lands in play in order to play that Beanstalk Giant, draw a card off it. This is very different from some of the more aggressively slanted adventure decks that we saw at the inception of the Eldraine format. There was the green-black one. There was a Jund one flying around for a little bit that was playing uh, you know, a more aggressively slanted uh, version with uh, cards like Order of Midnight, Smitten Swordmaster, Murderous Rider, little knight sub theme. But as the format opened up a little bit and team room adventures emerged, it really did become all about value. And that's what we've seen here. Giant Killer going after this uh, Beanstalk Giant, living up to its name here from Gab. And now he's in a position to play this Omnath and immediately get some value from it, as you said, by playing a land. Yeah, all about value indeed. And what we're seeing on, on Austin's side of the battlefield is he's really just waiting to find either Escape to the Wilds or Fae of Wishes. Those are those are the, the perfect cards once you've set up nicely the way that Austin has. But in the meantime, you know, he's, he's doing some okay stuff. He's treading water, drawing a card here and there with Edgewall Innkeeper. But, um, you know, it's it's Nasif who has the cards that really let him get off to the races, whereas it's Austin who has the mana. So who can kind of assemble the missing piece faster is going to be key to who wins this game. So Gabe here, known for his considered pace of play and certainly running down that rope as he figures out how he wants to play this one out. And uh, this this looks to me to be a non-Omnath turn, given the fact that he played a land out first. So we may see Granted here instead, would be my guess. Yeah. Granted so a lot of times... Two cards from the sideboard. Go ahead, sorry. A lot of times you'll see, you'll see players go for Negate in a situation like that. We know from our perspective that that actually won't match up very well against what Austin has to work with. I do like, of course, the return to nature. You can kind of never go wrong killing your opponent's Lucky Clover. But what will be the second choice? Escape to the Wilds. Yeah, just generic value card here makes a lot of sense. And a return to nature. We've seen uh, both players throughout the weekend prioritize the removal of the opposing Lucky Clovers. And this puts Gabe, I would say, a fair way ahead after getting rid of that Lucky Clover there. Yeah, I think so too. Again, it it really depends on if the top of Austin's library can deliver. The the Fey of Wishes granted now is is significantly weakened with Clover being off the battlefield. I think Austin needs to find escape to the wilds if uh you know that's that's his best path to to reaching parity in this game. Though this Ooh. is not a bad one either. Not too bad at all. Omnath into fertile footsteps can uh, can start the train rolling. Uh, alternatively, there's Edgewall Innkeeper into another Beanstalk Giant if you want to draw some extra cards. So Austin does have a few options here, but he won't be complaining about having drawn what is ultimately probably the best card in his deck here. Yeah, so he he can play this. With Lucky Clover gone, it's no guarantee of uh, of, of double-triggering landfall, but remember he does get the uh, the, the first draw Mm -hmm. on the front side of Omnath. So a lot of good things could happen to Austin based on, on top of his library. He's also taking this time, and this is high stakes magic here. The, the winner of this uh, game goes into the championship match where they'll face off against Aaron Gertler uh, to take down the title. The loser will end up in third place, still a respectable innings, of course, but not what either of these two blokes will be hoping for today. 
Riley, it seems like Austin is considering just playing Beanstalk Giant, just going Edgewall Innkeeper, Beanstalk Giant. We'll save mm -hmm. this Omnath for later. So again, the player's wrestling with the decision between let's play for the high upside play. If I have a land on top of my library, I might get to do it all with Omnath. Or let's plan for the worst case scenario where, you know, maybe my library delivers a brick. What's the best thing I can do? All right. So a Triome and another land off the top here as we see a 9-9 uh, nine -nine Muldrifter, Beanstalk Giant, drawing two cards on the way down. And, hey, get in there with that Edgewall Innkeeper. And now Gabe is in a position after casting this Omnath next turn potentially. Unfortunately, can't get the Omnath into the Escape to the Wilds at this point, unless Fabled Passage comes off the top, of course. A lot of it will depend on what's on the top of uh, Gabe's library. That'll def that'll define the next turn here. It's a Bony Crusher Giant. Well, that's an answer oh, that's, to both those Edgewall Innkeepers, at least. That's wonderful. Yeah, I was, you know, starting to be stressed out on, uh, Ga on, on, on Gab's behalf because his best answer to the opposing 10-10 Beanstalk Giant is Brazen Borrower. But hey, bouncing an adventure creature when they're going to get to cast the adventure side again and then draw two additional cards off the Edgewall Innkeepers, that ain't a winning battle. But here, no. Gab gets to clean up the board, stop his opponent's most important card advantage engine, and then kind of unlock Brazen Borrower as a much more reasonable defensive measure. So, double stomp, getting rid of both of those Edgewall Innkeepers. A tidy draw there for Nasif, who plays an Innkeeper of his own after having... Dispatch those two others. A hostile takeover of the innkeeper business here. With the Frenchman at the fore of it. And Fay of Wishes can come down, immediately draw a card. Now, Gabe hasn't played a land this turn, so if he can rip a land, then he can play the Bone Crusher Giant. So I think he'll be hoping for an untapped land here. And yeah, finds it too. Depends what approach he wants to take against that opposing 10 10 Beanstalk Giant. Uh, my recommendation is you know, don't take 10. So it depends if, if you want to throw a chump blocker in the way or if you want to delay things by a turn uh, by casting Brazen Borrower. If so, what's your timing on that spell? A lot to think about, even from this one you know subtle decision on, uh, on Gab's part. Now you say don't take 10 there, Reed, and maybe factoring in uh, a, factor, a factor that may influence that decision is the fact that Austin does have Flint in the sideboard. Gabe does not. Yeah, you, you just want to be sure when you're when you're getting ahead like this, don't leave the door open for your opponent to steal it. It reminds me of something Austin said on one of his uh, player interviews earlier in the weekend. He said, there's so much that can go wrong, and I'm paraphrasing, so much that can go wrong in the mirror match. You need to be worried about so much at all times. And, you know, thinking about ways to progress your game plan safely while not leaving doors open for uh, for your opponent to steal the game away from you. That's mm. one of the skills of, of piloting this mirror match. So, an Omnath here for Austin. That's his first of this match. Lotus Cobra in hand, in addition to that branch loft pathway. And the Beanstalk Giant that's been hanging out there for quite a while now. Lotus Cobra, probably the single most defining factor of uh, Austin's deck list as compared to Nassif's. Yes. Yeah, well, compared to most of the other um, Adventist decks that we've seen this weekend. Aaron Gertler waiting in the finals is is on the same page as Austin. I believe these two players practiced together and came to the same conclusion of two Lotus Cobras. In comes the 11-11. And immediately... A chomp block with the four three. Oh no, okay, thinks better of it. They make a different uh, a different block here. Well, I'll say it again. Don't take eleven. Ah, uh, but you said don't, don't take ten. Yeah, maybe don't take ten. Sounds maybe... better because you kind of get the rhyme there, and it's it's easier to remember that, like as a general magic concept. Just don't take. I'll say 10. it again. Don't take ten. Right. Okay. Bring that one home with you. <laughs> If someone tells you not to take 10 once, ah, it's fine. You could ignore that. But when they say it the second time, I'll, I'll tell you again, don't take 10. That's good what you what you got to worry about. All right, well, this 11-11 is going to be blocked by the Fae of Wishes, one for jumping under this giant bus here. The old Chumperino. Okay, we have seen the some games where the, the Fae of Wishes, you know, gets bounced to the hand and then granted it used a second time. 
Nassif's not really sweating that. He has so much gas in the tank between uh, double Omnath Escape to the Wilds and his existing Edgewall Innkeeper that he's not hard up for, for things to do with his mana. And uh, Fae of Wishes on the battlefield really doesn't do that much. So I think that is the correct chump lock. I like what Nassif did there. And this is a characteristic of the of the Adventures deck. It's not often that we see it run out of resources. I mean, Austin's actually in a weird spot now where he actually doesn't have that much going on resource-wise. And that's that's certainly unusual for this list that generally uh, is just flush with cards, flush with options, overflowing with resources usually. Okay, so what's happening here is Austin can trigger the Omnath and the Cobra and cast the Beanstalk Giant off of Adventure. And, you know, that's it. He's tapped out there, but that ain't a bad position. I mean, two 12-12 creatures, Omnath, Lotus Cobra, and Rogrin Triome in hand to untap and cycle to maybe find one more relevant play. Nassif has his work cut out for him. Um, I do like the position of, of the player who's untapping with all their mana and all these great cards at their fingertips, but it's a sweat, you know, he's, he, he's got, uh, Austin has succeeded in making it hard for him. So Omnath on the agenda potentially for Gabe here. But with Raugram Triome in hand, isn't going to be able to cast Escape to the Wilds after that. Brazen Borrower is a, a decent stopgap against these 12-12s at this point. Yeah, I think that's probably what we're looking at is Ooh. we'll just do what we can with this turn. And then as as the last thing, you know, no matter how the turn plays out, you're going to bounce the two 12-12 giants. Well, there's an untapped land and this opens the way for the Escape to the Wilds to be played and finds a Fabled Passage. Fabled Passage, of course, the perfect pair with Omnath. Yeah, so let's say Nassif has access to five more mana this turn. I do think that two of it is, that's just committed to uh, mm. to bouncing the Giants. He would love to recast the Borrower. That's actually not possible due to the uh, limitation of blue mana. He would need three blue mana for that. Um, but we, what he could do is cycle the Triome from his hand. Uh, as an alternative, if he wants to be on that chump block uh, plan, he could cast another Escape to the Wilds. Not my favorite. I think, I think bounce the... Uh, the Giants and Cycle the Triome is where I'd want to be. All right. Well, at least you're using all your mana there. So we're going to see Brazen Borrower's Petty Theft return both the Beanstalk Giants to hand. Now, typically bouncing an adventure creature doesn't feel very good because it does unlock the, the opportunity for them to use the adventure part of it again. But here it's actually not that bad because again, Beanstalk Giant at this late stage of the game isn't the explosive card that it is on turn three with, uh, you know, double lucky or the lucky clover out or whatever. Exactly, so. Riley. Circling back to the, the crucial... Bone Crusher Giant, which double stomped Bersavich's dub, uh, two Edgewall Innkeepers. In the absence of Edgewall, Keeper, Edgewall Innkeeper and Lucky Clover at this stage in the game, it's okay to bounce the Giants. But, you know, if, if uh, Austin was getting that additional value off of either of those Adventure Engine cards, it would be a different story. Back to Austin now. Double Beanstalk Giant, two lands in hand. That Triumph, of course, could be cycled away. We may see that first up. No Fertile Footsteps to open the account here for Austin this turn. And with Omnath and Lotus Cover in hand, oh, on the battlefield here, will be some rich rewards for getting that mountain into play. Four life, another mana. I mean, Austin's probably going to be in a position to just completely redeploy both these Beanstalk Giants here, right? Yeah, it's close. It's that's that. It's it's hard to count that high, Riley. But you know, I mean, we certainly are, are are doing our best with uh, two or three triggers of Lotus Cobra plus the four mana from from Omnath. Numbers are really hard, man. Numbers are really difficult. Yeah, I mean, I right. got up to... We got up to 10 earlier. We mm. got that mm. figured out with our rhyming scheme, yep. um, our mnemonics, but beyond, beyond that... that I, think most, I think most people just guess, mm -hmm. to be honest. You know, sometimes they get it right, but I, I think for the most part, people just guess beyond that. All right, here's the second uh, land for an Omnath trigger. And Austin and knows that Nassif's holding is is way too strong here. It's difficult for him to uh, match this on a on a you know toe for toe kind of basis. So he's looking for ways that he could steal it. You know, let's let's think about 
what is the flaw in Nassif's position? How can I exploit that? It's going to involve trying to connect with Beanstalk Giant at one point or another. What is he going to do with the Bone Crusher? That's an interesting question. Face value, you'd think you'd go after the Edgewall Innkeeper, but maybe he's going to save it to try to accomplish something more. Interesting as well that Austin is offering the trade with an Omnath here, and I think it's a good one for Gabe, given that he's got a second Omnath in hand, right? Yeah. Um, Austin, you know, is is correct from the information he has available to him to offer this trade, even offering the two-for-one of uh, Lotus Cobra and Stomp to trade for Omnath seems good from Austin's perspective. We know that one of Nassif's two unknown cards is just another copy of Omnath, so no, no sweat really for either player in this combat step. Yeah, I think I think Nassif will be uh, well served by trading his Omnath against Austin's, especially as he's the one with the Omnath advantage. All right, and the Lotus Cobra gets across. Now we're going to see Stomp on the edge wall Innkeeper. And the potentially the other half of Bone Crusher Giant as well. Yep, there it is, it's a 4-3. So back to Nassif now, he finds a Lucky Clover. No adventure cards to cast with it just yet. Let's see if that'll change with Omnath Locus of Creation coming down yet again for the Frenchman. I do like starting with Omnath. You want to you wanna get your life total above 17 so that you don't just randomly lose to Fae of Wishes for Fling. Mm -hmm. Again, focus on not taking any hits from those giants. Ooh. Okay. Well, now we can, now things get interesting with, the, with a couple of Lucky Clovers and a bunch of Beanstalk Giants. Yeah, the Omnath generating extra mana. So this is just a, you know, classic Omnath turn. The Seif doing everything he wants to do. I mean, you could actually have three Lucky Clovers. So these Fertile Footsteps actually make mana if you have enough um, basics in your deck. I mean, you've also got to deal with the 1515, but I mean, that's a secondary <laughs> consideration to ramping all that strangely, mana. Up, right? Strangely, this this uh, uh, a big factor in this game might actually be who can create bigger beanstalk giants. Yeah, <laughs> like the difference between Nasif playing a fourteen fourteen here and a sixteen sixteen here is actually quite significant. All right, let's see what the play is here. At the moment with just twelve lands. Okay, beanstalk giant, going to get two basics. Okay, only three left. So that sick play of quad lucky clover into triple beanstalk giant obviously wouldn't uh, get a whole lot done all right so two more lands with the third off footsteps only one basic remaining in in the deck and as you can see their beanstalk giants at the moment are 14 14. And a Lucky Clover, despite the fact there are no adventure cards to go with it, just a Brazen Borrow to flash in and maybe draw a card with the Edgewall Innkeeper here. Yeah. So it looks like we're going to be on the big Chumperinos once again with the Beanstalk Giant next turn. Now, uh, a, a, a small aside is uh, we talked about how Austin has Fling in his sideboard, Nasif does not. In that place, Nasif actually has Ember Cleave. And, you know, this is a spot from Austin's perspective where he would prefer to have Embercleave as opposed to Fling. Not going to be relevant to the outcome of this game, but just one more example of one of those deck building subtleties mm -hmm. where the players are playing for slightly different situations, slightly different advantages. And actually, you know, the, the deck building and sideboard building of, of this particular archetype can be quite fun. All right, Austin is going to go to attacks here. And you imagine the 15-15 going to get sent in. Yes, indeed. There it is. There's the attack. And in addition to that, the 4-3 Bone Crusher Giant. Now, Brazen Borrower can't block either of these creatures, but it will draw a card with the Edgewall Innkeeper. And this, this, uh, the playing of the 3-1 here indicates to me that that Edgewall Innkeeper is not long for this world. That's what I thought too, although, you know, seeing Nassif holding at this point, he is now in the, the mode that Austin has been in for most of the game, where his best play is probably just casting Beanstalk Giants off of Adventure. And and All actually, right. Nassif here looking to prioritize keeping the innkeeper even wow. over these very valuable wow. creatures. It might work out well, too, because having lined up these blocks, it reduces the value of the giant killer that Bursavich has just drawn. Yeah, that's true. Austin's uh, giant killer is, is not doing a lot on this board here. And this Edgewall innkeeper stands to do a lot of work in the coming turn, given... Oh, and another one off the top as well. Don't mind if I do. 
Very nice draw for two reasons. Number one, you get extra value off, off your Beanstalk Giants. Number two, it's another chump blocker. Another That's... chump blocker. <laughs> we need a steady stream of those, folks. Yep. The edge wall inker is here for a short time and not a good time. It's going to draw some extra cards for Nasif and then probably just be chucked under the Beanstalk bus here. All right, let's start things off. Floating a bunch of mana. And don't forget, these Beanstalk Giants are drawing uh, two cards each. Play the one that was exiled. I think that one was exiled to Escape from the Wilds there. There's another Escape from the Wilds. And a Crag Crown Pathway. So with now only six mana available, but the, the pathway means... Oh, there's already a couple of there's already a couple of pathways in a forest, of course, in hand here for Nasif. But another Beanstalk Giant can be played. And that it will does... uh, match... Austin's... Oh, they, now, this is interesting. Getting the extra land drop off the Escape of the Wilds is going to turn this uh, Beanstalk Giant into a 16-16. Uh, That's true. I think it's going to work out worse for Nasif based on the Giant Killer in Austin's hand, but I do like uh, where his head's at. And, and finding the Brazen Bar, this... Pick him up. Yeah. Yeah, bounce your whole board here. So the Edgewall Innkeeper's a stay of execution for them. They're not going to have to chump block this time. Yeah, bounce the Cobra, and then finally the Beanstalk Giant. Yeah, we're seeing more than petty theft here. This is Grand Larceny, 15, uh, 14 mana worth. Yeah. 16 mana <laughs> worth. <laughs> quite, quite the rap sheet for the uh, for the Brazen Borrower there. And now an attack for four, nice and clean. Yeah, that Brazen Borrower really was the find there, but I can see, I mean, Nasif's logic is difficult to fault there. You you mentioned before whoever had the, the biggest... Um, Beanstalk Giants was probably going to benefit the most, even though that one just got chopped down. Ooh, Omnath off the top here. Have a look at this one. Now, are there still basics in uh, in Austin's deck to fetch up with these uh, freshly bounced Beanstalk Giants? The other thing to note, of course, is that Nasif is sitting on that Bone Crusher Giant. That represents six damage right now. Yeah, I think we're seeing Nasif uh, putting the, the finishing touches on this. Now we're going to advance to game two, and we have to keep in mind, Riley, the overall perspective of the match, including the chess clocks. Aaron Gertler, who's waiting in our, our grand finals, said in a winner interview earlier today, he thinks the clock is an important factor in this match, especially when it comes to a player like Gabriel Nasif, who, you know, this is not the first time in the weekend um, that that we've seen the clock be be relevant for him, uh, you know, come up flashing by the time we get to game three. Right, in comes the borrower here, a lucky clover, and now with two copies of Stomp in hand, you'd think this is going to be enough. These both represent eight damage here. And uh, with Austin on the old F6 here, this one is going to go the way of the yellowest hat in Magic. Another stomp, and we're going to hit the sideboards. Game number one going to Gabriel Nassif, the French Hall of Famer, coming up with the goods after quite an extraordinary match. Quite an extraordinary game, I should say. Somehow Austin's just not even in his chair anymore. I missed when that happened. but Yeah, uh... he, <laughs> he did get up at, the, at one point. He did get up and, uh, and zip out of that room real quick. But the, uh, the, I the think it was the, for him the here. fifth stomp that he was like, all right. All right, I've seen, I've seen enough of this. I've seen, I've seen this, this episode before. <laughs> <laughs> but here, uh, the 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 I guess the good thing for uh, Austin, you know, as he as he takes a, a quick break there, he's, he's back now. Uh, there's not a lot of sideboarding to be done here, generally speaking. The the um, uh, the adventures deck don't they don't tend to sideboard too much. Yeah, that's exactly right, Riley. We have the Fay of Wishes sideboarding, which means at most it's it's one or two cards swapped in and out, not much of a structural change. Plus. Austin has played this matchup, what, you know, nine times over the course of the weekend. It, it, it's he, He's got this down by heart. There's no yeah. there's no wild cards here. Yeah, it's not like he's coming, okay, all right, now I have to start from scratch, back to, back to fundamentals here. And you can see, yeah, not players aren't changing around too much. Brazen Borrower coming out a little bit, shaving them for a mystical dispute on the side of Austin. And uh, Mystical Dispute also coming in for Gabe for that Brazen Borrower. So it looks like these two both on pretty similar technology here. 
Let's keep an eye on that brazen borrower as we go to game two and three, because uh, our, our colleague yesterday, Martin Yuza, said that he felt brazen borrower was kind of weak in this mirror match. Uh, yeah. As we've mentioned, you know, bouncing the adventure creatures can be a double edged sword. It was pretty good for Nassif in that first game there, where, where we ended up trading hits with Beanstalk Giants. But uh, definitely a card that that has, you know, multiple modes and it has highs and lows. And I would like to watch and see what the players do with it regarding sideboarding and just if it's effective. Let's have a look at these openers here. Lucky Clover in, in Austin's opener, which uh, I'm sure he'll be very happy to see. And the yeah. opener, not too bad either. Ooh, double edge all keeper now. <clears throat> Uh, both excellent hands, frankly. Uh, I, of the two, I prefer Austin's because of Lucky Clover Beanstalk Giant. That is the start for this deck, especially in a matchup that can be uh, a lot about who spends more mana on each turn. Having that opening just gives you such an advantage. Um, but it does rely on Austin finding that third land on time. Yes, it does. Well, I mean, he's got three copies of Lucky Clover in his hand, so Luck certainly is. Uh, do you think? Do you think drawing one makes it more likely to draw the other? Like Lucky Clover is obviously the card you want to see in your deck. So, do you think the luck imbued by one Lucky Clover makes it more likely for you to find the second one? Probably, right? That's, that's well, how, as, that's as a as a as a science nerd in the real world. In the real world, the the Lucky Four Leaf Clovers do appear more in clumps because yes. it's like a it's like a genetic mutation. So, oh no, no, can... no, it's not a genetic mutation. It's just luck. That's all it is. Okay, yeah. So luck yeah. is is more concentrated in certain <laughs> that's certain it. parts of the earth. Okay, that's it. You get for, like luck, you, you get luck me. pockets, right? Mm -hmm. And that that's where they tend to uh, yeah tend to breed. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll be spending my next two years trying to find one of those luck pockets. And yep. You check back then. Yeah, and 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 good luck to you as you do so. Here's an edge wall innkeeper now opening the account for Gabriel Nassif. Third land, critical third land for. Austin there, meaning that the Beanstalk Giant is live, it is in play, and we'll probably see a second Lucky Clover played next turn as well. Now, do you play at the second Edgewall Innkeeper here? It's pretty bad against an opposing Stomp. Yeah, uh, look, we, we, we know that this game is not going to go well for Nassif, no matter what he chooses. I think if I'm sitting in that position, I, I, I guess I would not. I guess I would not play it. Um, but this is, it's just as bad. I mean, by the time your opponent is executing Lucky Clover Beanstalk Giant on the play and you don't have that of your own, your, your chances of winning have already, uh, you know, taken a nosedive. So innkeeper in for one back now to Austin who, I mean, the, the immediate level one play for a smooth brain like me is the fertile footsteps into Lucky Clover. How much are you worried about the edge, edge wall innkeeper? Do you actually want to get rid of that instead of playing the second clover? Look at this early stage. It's okay, not an right? emergency, Riley, because yeah. right now, Nassif's limiting factor is is mana and not cards in hand. So if he wants to spend his turn like, hey, I'm just going to tap three and play a 4-3 giant and draw a card, that's probably a game that Austin is so happy to be playing that he's willing to take that risk. Yep, yep. So his third off footsteps, not quite as impressive for Gab as he doesn't have any copies of Lucky Clover, of course. His lock, po lock pockets are a little empty. And now Austin untapping double Lucky Clover. Fave wishes, Bone Crusher Giant, another Clover in hand as well, plus that Cobra, which has kind of come along at the wrong at the wrong point, that Lotus Cobra. But still, Austin in a great spot here. I wouldn't be shocked if he just went straight for a granted, uh, you know, triple granted. We, we've we seen uh, when players do this, a lot of times one of the copies goes for a land, you know, continue developing your mana and then just set up with some some nice efficient plays for later. Maybe maybe even uh, escape the wilds as, as your play for the following turn. Um, yeah, basically this play is just so good that I, I would be uh, hesitant to even look for something different. Double Fay of Wishes here. Or triple Fay of Wishes, I should say, without granted. Going to get a Fabled Passage and Escape to the Wilds. And let's see what else. This just looks like a classic value granted to me here. Or is the last... Oh, the last one's getting accounted. Yeah, nice one. So that actually takes the 1-4 out of contention, puts it in the bin. I want to comment oh. on that sequencing from uh, from Nassif. It's the little things. It's not 
very likely to be material to the outcome of the game, but but it, I, I appreciate the precision and the attention to detail. Your opponent copies uh, Faye of Wishes three times. Nasif lets Austin resolve the first two copies because he has to make his decision without knowing the third one's going to get going to get countered. So maybe mm -hmm. you have two selections of cards, one pile of three that you would love to get if all three are resolving, one pile of two that you would get if you know the third one's getting countered. Nasif's not going to give him that information when he's making his, his original decisions. And importantly, copying uh, countering the main copy of Fae of Wishes sends the creature to the graveyard instead of the exile, the adventure yes. zone. Yeah, and, that, and that's the really important reason to counter that last one. But I do like the, I do like the idea that someone's like, okay, yeah, for, I'll get this card, this card, and this card. I'll get this one last, and then that's the one that gets you're like ah. All right, Edge William Keeper. And this, of course, can be neatly answered by the Bone Crusher Giant that's in hand. Are we just going to see Brazen Borrow would draw two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This makes sense. Got to find those lands here. Yeah, so so triple stop is going to be real gruesome. You might want to shield your eyes next turn. But from a big picture perspective, the best thing the Steve could be doing right now is focusing on developing his own mana. Because, hey, this is looking really bad. Double Lucky Clover. Austin has a great holding. But if the game can continue, you can get your own mana underneath you. Maybe Austin has a few unlucky draws. That, you know, that's your best chance of winning. So so the Steve just focusing on hitting land drops and getting that escape to the wilds to resolve next turn is a good start. All right, Lotus Cobra pairing very well with, of course, that Fabled Passage. There's also Forest in hand. And uh, as we've already remarked, the Lotus Cobra is kind of the, the defining difference between Austin's deck and uh, Gabriel's deck uh, when it comes to the main, the starting 60 at least. Boy, even better for Austin getting to, to stomp off of the Escape to the Wilds, keeping the one in his hand, uh, you know, both for later and also disguise as soon as he doesn't know about it. Yep, and this is going to be very, this is going to be brutal here. This is like, I mean, he's he's almost, he's nearing lethal, right? Yeah. If, if he just took yeah. a turn off to play a Lucky Clover, he would have 16 points of stomping damage uh, ready to go. But, you know, a, that's, that's not stomping. necessary. He can just de uh, demolish his opponent's board and then win his convenience via possibly re returning, recasting Fae of Wishes. Or actually, correction, that one is just off of Escape to the Wild, so he can he can do a quadruple granted next turn. He has most definitely found one of those luck pockets. Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, we saw that with the opening hand. <laughs> his luck pocket overfloweth, and now Lucky Clover here with three copies of Lucky Clover. That means four copies of Stomp or four. Stomps are resolving. Eight damage. And uh, cleaning up Gabe's board here. And I don't know how. I don't know how Nasif can get back into this one. Oh, right on time. Yeah, there you go. Lucky Clover, better late than never. But it's an Omnath that'll be the play here for the Frenchman. Finds a land. He can play it to gain some life here. And uh, play out the Lucky Clover or Stomp the Cobra. Going to go for the latter there. And Austin Bursovic in prime position here with his triple clover draw. So we did to do with this just time. see Nassif's clock show up on the screen. 12 minutes to go. That's plenty. You know, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. This match is not likely to end via someone timing out. But what I do like is Nassif just playing crisply um, in a game that's, that's, you know, pretty likely to be lost. I just want to see him go to game three with enough time that he can play his best. Yeah, 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 for sure. Here's a Fae of Wishes now, getting so many cards out of the sideboard. Neutralize, negate, once and future. And this is the sort of the lockdown phase for Austin here, as he's already used Granted to get some value cards like Escape the Wilds. And now, once he's ahead, he wants to stay ahead. So he picks up a bunch of counter spells. Makes sense. And we see here Austin also hitting the clock and uh, is about 30 seconds behind Gabe. So if this game and particularly the next game go long, then uh, that's going to become increasingly relevant. So we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. Again, plenty of time. That That's a lot of time to play one game, but it, it's, it's something that can come up if the games are very, very close and drawn out. Uh, mm. Actually, slight advantage to the Seath here because we believe Austin's going to win this game, but it's going to take him 
significantly more time off the clock to actually deal the killing blow than it is for Nasif. You know, Nasif's just like, okay, I'll play my my one card each turn, and yeah, and that's clock what damage, I got. Mate. Clock damage. Yep. Clock damage. Yep. Clock damage. And a beanstalk giant after the failed attempt to get that lucky clover onto the battlefield here. Well, I was going to fire off this petty theft as well. No. <laughs> All right, bounce one of those lucky clovers. Maybe the edge wall innkeepers here. Yeah, so game playing for time, which makes sense. Time is a resource in these matches. And uh, I mean, if you sit there and I mean, it's just, you just can't stall, right? Because you'll get roped. So if you want to use up your opponent's clock. Yeah, I mean, there's not really anything to it except just not clicking concede. I mean, all you're doing is making your opponent de deal you the lethal damage, which mm -hmm. I, I think it's fine, you know, I think it's totally valid. Play the entire tournament without ever using the concede button. Just make your opponent get you to zero. That's fine. Yep. I mean, you've been doing that for years. You've been you've yeah. been doing that for, for a much longer than I probably anyone else read. Mm -hmm. And Omnath eating a neutralize here. And Faye of Wishes once again here. I don't think... I mean, Austin's just not going to have any cards left in his sideboard after this. There's a no, he's got them all. <laughs> he's got he's them been, all. He's picking up basically his entire sideboard, putting it in hand. Soul Guide Lantern, sure, why not? And an Ugin as well. Bit of a flex there. Storm's Wrath, just in case it all goes wrong. Red Cap Malay is going to get rid of this Bone Crusher Giant. Is this lethal here? This Can this, can this giant attack? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, there we go. All right. So Austin fighting, fighting the way forward, getting in with the Beanstalk Giant, and then we'll have a fling to uh, send it upstairs at Gabriel Nassif. And so we have got a game number three on our hands between Austin Savage and Gabriel Nassif, both of these on Omnath Adventures and both of them now at one game apiece. We're going to take a quick break here as these players sideboard and get ready for the next game. Do stay with us because the thrilling conclusion to this match is coming your way in just a few moments. Stick around. We'll see you back here for the coverage of the 2026 Grand Finals after this. Usually the smartest people in the room, but which players are the most interesting and why? A fellow competitor in this tournament, former teammate of mine, Seth Manfield. Um, he's just, he's just such an enigma. The most interesting Magic player that I have ever watched has to be, without a doubt, Seth Manfield. He's like a human black box. I've been playtesting with him and practicing for all of the major tournaments for over a decade now. And while he can make some of the greatest magic plays of all time, he can also just throw away a game just randomly. And so watching him is always just, I don't know, a, a roller coaster because I never know which side of Seth I'm gonna get. Usually it's the one that wins the games, but every once in a while we get that wild card. In Denmark, we have many players who I consider great friends and great amongstments. Michael Bundy, Thomas Innovals, and Oscar Kristen, Martin Dang, and so many more of all the players I've been grown up and playing with. So all of those are interesting in their own way, and they're all great guys. I'll say all of the Danish Magic Pros that I have been on the site. It's definitely PV. Uh, he's one of the smartest people I've, I've known. Uh, not only Magic-related stuff, like, he's really smart in, in, in everything else, like, in, in life, generally speaking, like, in general knowledge. The most interesting Magic player I know is actually Reed Duke. The reason why Reed is so interesting is I don't know how he does it. The, his focus for the game and his professionalism. He's just someone who I've always really respected and looked up to playing. I, I think Andrew Cuneo has got to be one of the one of the most interesting players I know. Cuneo just has this incredibly unique take on basically everything, including like designing winter orb based cubes, like where every card refers to winter orb somehow. And uh, yeah, just he, he's a really funny guy. Perfect sense of dry humor. Cuneo's awesome. Coverage of the 2020 season grand finals continues. Friday night in the booth, joined by the Hall of Famer Reed Duke. 
And we're going to jump back in to the sideboarding between these two here, Austin Burr Savage and Gabriel Nassif. The French Hall of Famer facing off against Austin out of America. And uh, they're all tied up at one and one at this point here. We don't tend to see too much sideboarding take place with this deck, to be honest. A very light touch employed generally by the Four Color Adventures deck. And I don't expect that to change too much. And as you said before, Reid, these players, they played this matchup throughout the weekend. They know what they're doing sideboarding. Yeah, I think it was also no, no secret going into the event that this was going to be one of the, if not the most popular deck. So I think players probably just maximize their main deck for, for this matchup uh, as as well as they could. So again, we're going to see some small changes, a mystical dispute here, you know, uh, uh, shredded sales there, but no structural changes. This is this is mostly the same uh, matchup that we saw in game number one. Well, as you may expect, Austin here, raring to go. Gabe going to take his time with this sideboarding process. Looks like both of them uh, ducked out to get a quick drink as well, making the most of that break there in order to uh, stay hydrated. Got to stay hydrated. It's so important. Yeah, you know, along that those lines, Riley, this is like a marathon for these players. Mm, mm. We, we see the intricacies of one turn of one game of one of these matches. And then you, you, you put that in the perspective of like, Austin is playing what six seven if he if he makes it all the way to the uh to, mm. to 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 match three of the championship match like he's playing a lot of these mirror matches and these games have been tight you know it's it's a level of focus that you have to maintain through a very long stretch of time that's exactly right and we're off to the races here now gabe on the play opening things up with an edge wall innkeeper no lucky clover in the hand of austin but Gabe does have it on turn two, in addition to that Omnath. So the dream start for him. Beanstalk Giant also up in the mix. So really just the perfect start for the French Hall of Famer here. He'll be very mm -hmm. happy about how this uh, this game is opening up. Yeah, this is almost the mirror image of the previous game where uh, the player on the play in, in the last game, it was uh, Bursavich. This this game, it's Nassif. Has that perfect, you know, turn two Clover, turn three Beanstalk Giant. Mm -hmm. If they can find an untapped land, uh, note that the Fabled Passage is, is not enough, nor is that Rogrin Triome to uh, actually get the Beanstalk Giant off the off the starting mark here. But even that's not too bad. If you've got the Omnath next turn, the Beanstalk Giant after that, Escape of the Wilds as well, it means you've got a dearth of, uh, of land drops to make here. Austin thinking about what's the best he can do on this turn. We know that Nassif does not have access to Stomp via Bone Crusher Giant, but uh, Austin's going to be kind of hesitant to deploy two low toughness creatures for fear that it, that that's what uh, Nassif is is preparing for with the tapped Triome. Here's a Cobra, and once again that play that uh, Bursavich has been making a fair bit here. Sorry, Bursavich, uh, bouncing the Lucky Clover. Actually looks great here. Um, you know, it stops the Beanstalk Giant play. We're, I think we're going to see Nassif now go for Omnath instead and then mm -hmm. try to set up Lucky Clover, um, Beanstalk Giant the following turn. Note yep, that the sense. Branch Loft pathway, not good enough to deploy Omnath. He's going to have to Fabled Passage for Island or Mountain. If you were wondering, hey, why didn't he save that for a Landfall Trigger later? That's why. Now you'll notice that uh, Austin has just a, about eight and a half minutes left. Gabe has ducked under 12 minutes, although his clock hasn't appeared just yet. So it looks like Austin is uh, a little behind on time. We'll keep an eye on that, Reid. That may prove relevant as this uh, these games too, do tend to be a little grindy sometimes. Yeah, if you ask me, eight minutes in 20 seconds should be plenty under normal circumstances, especially if you kind of are aware of it and you're not taking an excessive amount of time on the little decisions. It's, it's usually enough, though. These games can go very long, be very close, and uh, it is something the players will be thinking about. So Cobra here, generating a bit of mana. And we're going to see Giant Killer take care of Gabe's Omnath. Austin's deck really uh, functioning quite impressively if you factor in that this is one of the non-Lucky Clover games. I mean, he's just yeah. using all his cards fair and square at face value, but doing it super well, like sequencing well and uh, put it, putting uh, 
Sif in a position where he can't really establish anything on the battlefield. So, you know, so far so good, I guess, for both players. Here's Lucky Clover, and we may see another... Yeah, look at this. Beanstalk Giant into another Lucky Clover here. And this is perfect. I mean, Gabe has set up uh, his board quite nicely, and then uh, we'll be able to cast the Escape to the Wilds next turn in order to refuel. And that's exactly what you want to do. Uh, that, you know, that, that's how things are sort of planned out with this deck. That, that's kind of what you want to have happen here. A deck that doesn't uh, doesn't ever really run out of resources. We haven't seen too many situations where the four color adventures deck has just sort of been hell bent. You know, no cards in hand, no cards in the exile zone to play. They're usually flush with resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's like the the downside when everything else fails. It's like okay, I guess I'll just play some giants off off of adventure. That's the usually the worst thing that's happening to these adventure players. Yeah, as yeah. you said, Riley, almost inconceivable that they would actually pass a turn without spending their mana. Double Edge will keep providing some extra cards here for Austin off that giant killer. He's got a third one in hand as well, so that's what we're talking about when it comes to resources. And I'm sure that with a bit of good luck, Gay will be able to find what he needs with Escape to the Wilds. But Austin isn't finished just yet. Let's see what's next out of the hopper here. Another Fertile Footsteps. And from there, you can play out this Edgewall Innkeeper again. Do you, do you play out the third one? I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound, right? Yeah, I think so. You know, given that Giant Killer and Lotus Cobra have some value... Uh, well, actually, this is much better. To, much better set, uh, way of using mana, but I guess sure. my point was just that it's, it's not that... You know, the difference between having four low toughness creatures and five on the battlefield shouldn't be that big. It could come up if, if Nasif has double stomp or if he has uh Fae of Wishes for Storm's Wrath, something like that. But I think it's All right, let's no see what we hit here. here. Off this Escape of the Wilds. All right. Omnath is not bad, but can't cast it this turn. <clears throat> well that is Fae of Wishes, which I would not be surprised if that ended up going for a Storm's Wrath Shadow the Sky equivalent card. Sure, um, sure. But Nasif doesn't have to feel rushed to do that. He, he can do everything next turn. So whatever he chooses here could be fine. Um, as we've seen, double double Lucky Clover, Beanstalk Giant, that's sort of free. You get your mana right back if you cast the Fertile Footsteps. And then uh, he can choose what else to do with his mana between casting Omnath, casting Granted, or holding up Mystical Dispute. Wait, so yeah, no, with the Beanstalk Giant, you actually can cast Omnath, right? Yes, he should be able yeah, to if, right. he, if he has yep. the proper uh, proper basic lands remaining in his deck. Uh, sure, yeah, yep. Can get those two. Oh, no, okay, not going to. All right. Okay, go, still got a mount. Excuse me, sorry. A little ahead of myself there, and then go planes into Omnath. <clears throat> Is that what we're going to see here? Or potentially Fae of Wishes instead? I mean, it's a lot of damage, right? Yeah, both look good to me. Um... I think I, I, I would maybe just play the Omnath because it can block. Yeah. I'm going to go for the Granted instead. Yeah, that's that's totally fine too. Uh, there's there's some upside, including that um, you can Storm's Wrath before you play your Omnath, and you can play Omnath on a turn that you're getting the life gain trigger right away. So, yeah, it make, makes total sense. Gets an Ugin. Gets a Negate. And we'll see what the third one is here. You mentioned Storm's Wrath as a potential, opportun uh, a potential card here. Shadow the Sky, another sweeper in the uh, in the board. Uh, whoa, he got Ugin and not Storm's Wrath, which that's great. I mean, that's that's wonderful. You get to to get Ugin on the battlefield with high, very high likelihood. Um, Storm's Wrath can accomplish the same thing at a lower cost. But yeah, the the, the third choice really interesting here. Neutralize, sure. I think if Nasif knew what we knew, mm. he may have uh, chosen to get a disenchant effect for a lucky clover. This is something that um, has come up before, where if you're doing well, you have a lot of mana, everything's everything's going nicely. It's very tempting to go for that counterspell and sit on it. That's a mm -hmm. great play. 
But the difference between getting a negate and passing with two mana open versus getting a negate when you're tapped out, passing yeah. the turn and hoping that you're still in a commanding position when you untap again, that's a little more dicey. So so um, getting two counter spells here for Nasif, it might be a little bit, I don't know if conservative is the word, but he might have a little bit of trouble making his cards line up uh, the way he, he wants them to. It might, might take a little bit of work to do that. I think if you put yourself here in Austin's shoes, right? He he knows that this Ugin's coming down next turn. So what what does he do about this? He can play Omnath, get the value while it's there. But I mean, he's going to lose his entire board. Obviously, the Lucky Clover doesn't get exiled by it, but everything else does. Sure. So a couple of things you could do, um, and perhaps one of the reasons the Thief searched for Ugin instead of just uh, Mirror Storm's Wrath is. Uh, Beanstalk Giant can be killed by Ugin, but it requires the full minus seven. So that's a that's a trade. Um, so I think Austin, he may try to just cast Beanstalk Giant here, especially with all these Edgewall Innkeepers to refuel. Okay. Or alternatively, he could pass the turn with Brazen Borrower and try to flash that at the end of the turn to attack Ugin. Um, in either case, you just want to make sure that the Seif is getting one shot with Ugin, not multiple shots. I think what's happening here instead, however, is Austin is just saying, okay, I'm going to, I know I'm going to lose all this stuff, but I'm just going to, at the moment, every creature I play, this is an ancestor recall, uh, you know, attached to That's every right. creature. So I'm just going to play as many of these out as possible. I know that they're all going to get destroyed and I know that you're going to get, you know, your seven for one or whatever, but I've already drawn like 10 cards off of these Edgewell Innkeepers. So I'm fine with this. I'm fine with this trade. Yeah. So I guess the, when you know the board sweeper is coming, the next best thing you could do is, let me set myself up that I can recover as efficiently as possible yep. once it happens. Doing that with a full grip here, I think, was the play. I mean, I like that line that you talked about, flashing in the Brazen Borrower to kill the Ugin, which obviously would have minus three or minus four even because of the Omnath here. But uh, Austin is now passing the turn with a with a full grip. And uh, Nasif more or less priced into this, this Ugin here, I would have thought, right? I think, yeah, I mean, I think you have to. And it, it's you're going to lose... I guess just the Omnath off of your Escape to the Wilds, but you, 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 you there's no, there's nothing else, right? You can't let Austin on tap with this board. No, certainly not. Oh no, okay, gonna go. So I see. This is, this is, this is gonna be um, mm. five wishes to, go, <laughs> to go and get that Storm's Wrath that he didn't get last turn. <laughs> yeah, bobbing and weaving here. It's like, uh, oh, you knew Ugin was coming. You didn't. You, you prepared for exactly Ugin. You yeah. may not have prepared for Storm's Wrath plus Omnath. Yeah. So yeah, this is just just you know masterful. Oh, I like that, the way Austin took his turn, but here Nasif is uh, yep. potentially setting up something even better. That's it. That big McElroy energy. He's just zagging on him here. Gone, gone, and got that Storm's Wrath to clear the board. And now, maybe now is the time that we get that return to nature, so as to deal with the Lucky Clover as well. Yes, indeed. Man, the the triple granted. You give a player. Well, like Gabriel Nassif or, or any of the players um, in our event this weekend, access to that much like versatility at their fingertips, yep. and they're going to find some impressive plays to make. Oh, yeah. Yep. So here, Gabriel Nassif, genius or grifter, gets the Ugin. Austin does the best he can to play into it, and now Storm's Wrath instead. From wow. the top rope, look at that. Bam! Get them out of here. And so Return to Nature also destroying the Lucky Clover. And let's see what kind of bow Gabe wants to put on this turn here. He's got Neutralize up. And what's uh, in the Use It or Lose It bucket for um, Escape to the Wild? It's just that Omnath, isn't it? Yeah, the, he's going to lose the, the Omnath. The, the dispute. That is a significant loss, Riley, because uh, Gabe's life total is, is not trivial here. I mean, he would love a source of life gain to get up to 11 or 15. But so far, so good for Nassif. He, he gets to wipe the board. He's got a lot of lands, two Lucky Clovers, and he gets to counter one spell of his choice this turn. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be this Omnath? You'd Seems think it fine. Be. Yeah, because, I mean, otherwise you're just going to have that Beanstalk Giant come down. Those Beanstalk Giants on the right-hand side of uh, Austin's hand can, can get played here. So neutralize the Omnath. Nice little bottleneck there. Although this does op open the way for... A Fay of Wishes potentially here for Austin, although it's not going to be anywhere near as good as Gabe's Double Lucky Clover Fay of Wishes play. Uh, Riley, I may be proven wrong with what I said a few minutes ago. You want to check back in on these chess clocks here? Both players now. Oh wow, wow, wow! They're in the red, so to speak. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> time flies when you're having fun, I guess. Look at that. Austin down to three minutes. Gabe down to just over four and a half. So Austin's going to have to pick up the pace here. Channel is in a Teferi. Yeah, I think Austin is basically, he just wants to find a way to assemble Beanstalk Giant Fling, which yes. easier said than done when you know Gabriel Lucif is holding the gate. But uh, I think, you know, while we started the game at eight minutes and change, that was plenty. But now from, from a position where you are going to have no creatures on the battlefield trying to attack in combat, get those last seven points of damage with such a low amount of time on your clock, is going to be tricky. He might just try to steal one here with the flame. All right, escape the wilds now for Gabe. And, of course, Gabe with a slight advantage on the clock here, just under two, just under two minutes ahead. He's uh, going to want to keep it that way. You know, you're ahead to explode once the uh, the timer hits zero. So let's see how he wants to uh, wants to progress here. I mean, he can start playing Beanstalk Giants of his own. As long as he doesn't tap out of that negate, I wonder what the worst thing that can happen is. I mean, if there's a man who knows how to manage a clock, it is Gabriel Nassif. See how much basics he's got left here with his Fable Passage. Just two. One now. Yeah, so... You know, Austin has available to him the play of recasting Fae of Wishes, discarding two lands, put it back in his hand, wish for something else. It's very mana intensive, but, uh, you know, Nassif has, has a lot to play around here to make sure that Austin can't slip something through the cracks. I mean, at this point, look at this. Gabe's, Gabe has actually put almost his entire sideboard in his hand here. He's put nine cards. Is that right? He's going to put nine cards from his sideboard into his hand. Unbel I mean, holy moly, this is unbelievable. <laughs> Come on, Nassif. The fourth, the fourth fave wishes doesn't matter. Just pick something. <laughs> Just anything, man. Just an actual, like, you're going to put a ham sandwich in your hand, mate. All right, going to pass the turn here. I mean, does Gabe just look at the clock and go, right, I'm not. I'm just going to play the time here. Like, I, I, I don't need to actually win with damage. I just need to make sure that you can't beat me in, in two and a half minutes. Yes and no, Riley. Um, I mean, uh, like, at a certain point, Austin could just say the same thing and start passing. Yeah. And somebody's got to win the game, either by dealing lethal damage or getting, or, or getting a clock down to zero. And, uh, I mean, you, you, like, you have to stay ahead on clock at this point. If Nassif takes his time on one more decision he could accidentally flip the script and then yeah. suddenly it's him under the gun and i don't you know i don't want to see this match end by time in no. in either direction no. frankly i mean it is a fair and square ending to a match of magic but i would like to see these these players it's more fun to see them playing for a win right yeah to a natural conclusion of course obviously not always possible with the way that the clocks work but certainly what you prefer Right, negate the pick here for Austin out of the sideboard. And a Fae of Wishes now as a 1-4. It's going to resolve. We're going to see Stomp, not only on the Fae of Wishes, but two damage upstairs as well here for Nassif. Thanks to those lucky Clovers. And I, I'm really interested to see what happens. I'm really interested to see the direction that Gabe, uh, Gabe takes here. He's ahead on the clock by about 40 seconds. Keep All right, you got to hold up negate. You got to cast some beanstalk giants. You've got the ember cleave, and you got to do it quickly. That's that. Those are those are. That's my checklist for this turn. If if Gabe can accomplish that. All right. Well, he's he's falling behind on that last one already. Reed, I hate to say, it. <laughs> he's already not following that that last bit of advice here. So considering his options, I feel like I as a as a spectator am feeling. A sense of urgency yes. you know, greater than these players. Oh, me too, my friend. Me too. <laughs> Gabe is about to fall behind on the clock. You love to see it. Gabriel Nassif with one minute and 45 seconds to go. Cool as a cucumber here. As he can, as he surveys his vast domain of cards that he can play. That rope burning down, that is Gabriel Nassif in his element my friends he yeah. loves it he, th he lives for this he thrives okay, so, on it so what you're seeing here is gabriel nasif giving up an extremely large tangible advantage in the match in order to set up a win with ember cleave next turn so he he is now committing himself like i am going to win with ember cleave next turn that's it that's the way this game ends and he's giving up you know he, he he's now the person who's under stress instead of austin because of the yeah. way he took his time on this turn Yep, Austin's just been given a, a free 40-second lead here 
as Beanstalk Giant comes down for Austin as well. But with a 17-17 double striker probably uh, entering the red zone next turn, it could all be moot. Let's see. Let's see. There is There, of course, are negates in, on both sides here. But uh, the thing is, Gabe can't use the negate to fight Austin's negate without potentially running into fling. This is true. This is true. So Burse, it's Bursevich now who's hitting the tank as the as the seconds tick down towards zero. Still got a 20-second lead here. Back to Nassif. Under a minute remaining here for the French Hall of Famer. A slight shake of the head. Perhaps he knows that this one has kind of slipped out of his grasp. Just attack for 16, play another giant. And we're going to see a fling going oh, upstairs and in the gate here. Boy, Excuse Riley, me? A negate to deal with it in the, with that negate, and is that it? Wow! There's nothing else that Gabriel Deceive can do with fling with negate backup means that this uh, giant is going straight upstairs, and poor old Gabriel Nassif has unfortunately bowed out of this game. Congratulations to Austin, who won in incredible circumstances. They're picking his moment, playing masterfully in order to get across the line. And poor old Gabe, hmm. unfortunately, has gone down. Congratulations once again, Austin. What a game from him.